When I'm working with students in a one-on-one setting, a lot of times students will get really fearful leading up to an exam, no matter how well they've prepared because of uh, the pressure that's on the exam. Uh, The outcome of the exam might make a huge difference in their futures, might determine if they get into schools, certain different things. And I can't be with students when they're taking their exams. I can only give them tips and tools and help them come up with their own strategies and their own coping mechanisms to deal with their stress when they're going through the exam. But I can also share my experiences of how I've overcome my own fears, my own stress when I'm going through exams that have a lot of pressure on them and how I've been able to rise to the occasion. And so I wanted to share some of those in this video. In my experience, I didn't really have academic difficulties until I got into medical school, and then I had all of the academic difficulties. Um, Because I was in med school, I was able to have access to a lot of psychiatrists, psychologists, therapists, all of the experts in their types of fields like cognitive behavioral therapy and other things that really helped me come up with tools and helped me understand what was going on in myself that was causing me to have academic difficulties regardless of my preparation. I also, at that point in time, really had to figure out what faith meant for me, uh, what, what kind of faith I believed in, what I actually wanted to do, and what I actually did believe. And so my academic experiences failing was both a personal journey of figuring out how my mind actually works, how my thoughts are sometimes causing me to fail, how sometimes my preparation is causing me to fail, but sometimes the situation literally is like a, a door being closed that no matter how much I try, it's just not about to happen, and really having to figure out the discernment between them. And so I came to a conclusion that I didn't want to figure this out myself. I didn't think that it was going to make logical sense to me at all times. And so for me, having faith in a higher being, I believe in God, believing that like God has something to do with everything going on and that like there is a will above my will that is really what's making everything happen and that it's more of me figuring out, okay, well, if this doesn't go my way, why would it still be beneficial in the long run for it to not necessarily go my way? Uh, Martin Luther King, I'm not sure if he was the first person, but Martin Luther King Jr. said um, the arc towards justice, no, hmm, the something, something, something is long, but it arcs towards justice which is basically the road to something is long, but it arcs towards justice. It's more or less saying, (laughs) look it up if you really want the exact quote, but it's basically saying that um, it's not going to happen overnight, especially certain things that you think should just happen now aren't necessarily going to happen overnight. And a lot of that is coming to terms with all of the things that are in balance of powers in the world, whether that's actual literal like powers, like the powers that be, or whether that's like God and demonic forces and other powers, supernatural powers within the world. So um, before I went to med school, like I was excelling in school, understanding I had heard about like God's will and God's purpose in my life. And so For me, up until that point in time, it was like pretty easy for me to be like, oh, yeah, God's purpose is for me to be excellent. God's purpose and God's will is for like this to always go well. God's will is for me to be a doctor. So this is going to be a smooth road for me. And yeah, it was easy for me to understand God's will is like in alignment with my will, to be honest. But then when I got to medical school, I really was like, okay, well, if I think God's will is for me to be a doctor. Why would God's will also for me to be failing these classes? Like, that doesn't really make any sense to me. But I realized God's will isn't necessarily my will. And okay, maybe God's will was for me to go to medical school. Maybe God's will is not necessarily for me to be a doctor in the long run. And maybe there are certain experiences, certain people that I'm supposed to be meeting, certain other things that I'm supposed to be doing while I'm in medical school that is really more part of the purpose of what God has here than the product of being a doctor itself and really having to give over 
whatever was going to be to like accepting what was happening was going to be God's will, whether that was me failing or me passing. To be honest, when I failed a test and when I passed a test, I don't even in retrospect feel like there was very much of a difference in the way that I studied for certain things. I think it was a lot more of just my mindset being able to overcome in certain circumstances where like if I felt like the teacher believed in me and the teacher thought I was going to do well, I tended to do better than if the teacher, I, I already felt like, well, they don't think I'm about to do well here. They're a really bad teacher in the way that I learned. So this is just not a setup for me to do well. And so I would have to do so much more. But I recognize like that frustration behind all of that was really what led me to that, like be second guessing myself when I was having multiple choice questions. And so... I had to learn a lot of lessons of like how to manage my thoughts, even when I felt like everyone was against me, even when I felt like, okay, well, nobody believes this is going to happen, but like, I believe this is going to happen. I had one test where I was about to be like dismissed from med school and I had two days to retake the exam and start the next year, or I was going to have to take a year off of school. And I was like, I'm not taking a year off of school. I'm taking this exam. I don't feel it's for me to be taking a year off of school right now. And I took the exam and literally got the exact percentage you needed to pass. And I, that was God, like no questions. I know those are moments that have really affirmed for me. Like this is, God wants me to be here. Like this is not me deciding this on my own. There's absolutely something going on behind the scenes that's working in my favor. But there's also acknowledging that like I had gotten to the point where I was about to be dismissed from med school for things that were like not working in my favor. And OK, well, if God was there, how's God here? Like that balance is very difficult. Now I have a much better understanding of what God's will is, mostly because I'm able to have peace regardless of what I want to happen, that what will happen is going to happen anyways. And I have, my peace comes more when I'm able to accept what is happening as what should be happening and not fight it, but just go with it. Not necessarily like go with the flow and just like don't fight anything, but like for example, when a presidential election is happening and the winner is elected not fighting the result of the election whether that's in my favor or against my favor just going with what happened and acknowledging that I have other ways in which I can do things I don't have to fight this one specific thing I also recognize that God's will is greater than my performance God's will is like it goes beyond whether I'm doing well or not doing well it really has nothing to do with how I'm performing and having to redefine like my identity is in who God created me to be not in my who like the world thinks I'm supposed to be and really being affirmed that like okay the world wants me to be doing this but I like really feel in deep that this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And so, yeah, it seems like a challenge. It seems more difficult, but like, I, this is what I'm supposed to be doing and really just standing affirmed in that, even when it gets difficult or you feel like you're standing alone. I've also developed a much better understanding of what prayer means for me. I've done a lot of like reading of the Lord's Prayer and other religions' way, ways of praying and what they're praying to, how prayer is like an intentional thing and for me prayer is also a way of me affirming myself in who God is and so I think that the Lord's prayer for me in whatever situation I challenge myself to adapt the Lord's prayer to that situation for me and make it authentic to myself of what I'm experiencing in that moment um, to actually remind myself of who I am in God and who God created me to be and not be so overwhelmed with an outcome that really is more valuable to the world than to God in the first place. I've also come to a better understanding of what prayer means, how prayer is valuable in my life, why prayer is valuable in my life, and what I can do based on the Lord's prayer, um, adapting that to other situations to really make myself aware of aligning myself with God's will and how to consistently be aligned with God's will, especially because I recognize a lot of the times I'm frustrated is because my will is not in alignment with God's will and 
coming to somewhere in acceptance of what God's will is. So the prayer starts, dear God, who's in heaven watching all of this nonsense that's going on, help me remember everything you are. One day this world will be just like heaven. And I thank you that I get to make it happen. I pray that my life experiences help me learn more about your will so that I will desire what you desire. May I never become so self-sufficient that I believe I don't need you. May I remain so aware of your forgiveness for me that I easily forgive others. Give me control over my mind when it wanders. Help me ignore thoughts of doubt or inadequacy. Let me meditate on who you say I am. For everything is yours anyways. May I forever have joy in you. You can do anything. May I forever be reminded of the amazing things you do in and through me. You're the real goat. Amen. So I encourage you as you're going through your challenging situations, as you're preparing for really hard exams or whatever other life circumstance you're going through, I encourage you to adapt the Lord's Prayer to your personal experience. The prayer that Jesus gave was a template for us to go off of. They asked, like, what's a perfect prayer? And so Jesus was like, okay, well, like, here's an option for you. But it's not the only prayer that you can have. So I encourage you, if you've got a really stressful test coming up or some other life circumstance, I challenge you to adapt the Lord's Prayer to your own life. Make it personal.